This is a standard uh, cheapy dollar store style um, USB light. Uh, I'll just plug this in and show you it lit. These tend to come with the uh, cold white LEDs, which are always a wee bit, wee bit bland. Um, so this one's actually drawing 40 milliamps, which is quite low actually. Uh, most of them try and push the LEDs quite hard, so it's nice to see this one is uh, running them at less than 10 milliamps each, which is good. But I'm going to change it from um, the cold white LEDs to warm white LEDs. Another option, of course, would be blue LEDs if you wished, or even red LEDs. Um, so, disassembly of the case of this particular type of light involves taking this bush and twisting it off. Then if you twist the where the flexible um, gooseneck goes in, it's got a notch in it for alignment, so you can remove it. Then this plastic cover, the front cover, slides back just a, a few millimetres to the point that there are notches cut into the side of the case and it will then just lift out. And that reveals the circuit board with a little sort of pseudo reflector type thing on it. And here's the circuit board. It's got the five LEDs in parallel and the 40 milliamps, uh, let's see, it's a five volt supply, three volt across LEDs, two volts across the resistor. So that would mean that the 47 ohms, yeah, it gives about the 40 milliamps. Yep. Okay, so I'll just note that uh, this is the negative. In fact, this whole side is negative, so I'll just make a wee mark like that as well, black, just as a reminder for the LEDs. And I shall desolder that completely to make it easier to work on. Oop, uh, this wire's just popped off anyway. I may actually just strip that wire and solder it back onto that resistor before I go any further. Because uh, it's probably going to be easier doing it while the resistor is stuck to the board before I remove the resistor from the board. At this point you could also change the resistor. I'm using a lead based solder because lead based solder is infinitely better than the non lead based solder as any veterans of electronics will know. So I'm just going to tin this. Very, very thin wire, but that's kind of what you expect. And a very small resistor. Not sure how easy it would be to fit a quarter watt resistor in there, but this is a wee eighth watt resistor. Ooh, that's very small. Is that tacked on okay? I think it has. So off comes the resistor. Rightio, so that bit can go out the way. And that just leaves us a circuit board here. Now, the best way I've found to remove the LEDs is to use a bit of aquarium um, air, ho air hose tubing and squeeze it over the LEDs, then simply, while pulling it uh, with a couple of fingers and holding the circuit board with the other couple, um, heat the solder joints and the LED will just pop out like that. So that's one LED out. You're heating the both solder joints at once just so that the whole LED is released in a one -er. This is where you find that the lead-free solder used in manufacturing is really dry. It doesn't tend to, um, it doesn't tend to flow that well um, when you're trying to desolder components. It's a bad idea altogether. I don't know why they went for lead-based, uh, lead-free solder. You can guess that the people that actually behind that decision aren't really technically capable. So, oop, that's the fourth of five out, and here comes the last LED. There we go. And the LEDs I've removed will go into the little tub marked oh, where is it? marked LEDs I've removed from stuff but can't really bear to throw out because they still work. They won't ever get used, but hey. Now, 
let's uh, get the circuit board uh, and clean off the solder. This is where it's quite useful to put it into a little vise. Or, to be fair, I could use one of those little uh, crocodile clip uh, holders as well. And I'm going to tin, retin all the solder pads, which I'm going to be removing solder from, because retinning it with the good quality lead-based solder makes it a lot easier to desolder uh, them to clean the pads completely. Now, this is where you could probably use a desoldering pump to clean the pads, which seems to do a decent enough job. But my preference is actually desoldering wick. Desoldering wick is a copper braid with a uh, soda flux in it. And when you apply it to the pads, uh, the, any solder on them gets sucked into it. And it leaves very, very clean pads. So I'll just work my way along these, removing residual solder ready for the new LEDs to get poked through the holes. And that's nice and clean looking. Okay. Now what I like to do is get the LEDs. Now that's the side I marked the black, so that's the negative side. So that's the side that the short uh, leads go to. Actually, that's kind of, I that notes the LEDs are long ways, but they're kind of marked on it anyway, which is quite handy. Oh. Marked on it correctly. So, LEDs will go in. I was just double checking that everything was uh, correct in case I'd marked the, the what they'd put the LEDs in the wrong at the factory, which is not unheard of. So I'm just going to sit the LEDs in like this loosely. Now what I like to do is just kink back the long lead because it's easiest to get a hold of. Can get back like that, and that stops the LEDs falling out while I'm soldering it. And then I tend to solder the positive connection first. Because the positive connection is not normally connected directly to the little reflector that holds the LED. This is where it gets very footry. And that means that uh, you can reposition the LED uh, reheat that joint a couple of times just to get that absolutely perfect without any real risk of damaging the LED. So soldering the anodes first. It's not that hard to do. It's not as easy as taking the LEDs out. The little uh, aquarium tube trick, silicon aquarium tube trick is very, very good for that. Okay, so that's all the anodes soldered. Are the LEDs sitting the square? Yes, they are. So I'll solder the rest of the connections now which is easier because I don't have to hold the LEDs in at the same time as the circuit board and the solder. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. And I'll also put a wee touch more solder on the point that the wires are going to reconnect to again. If you're using a lead-based solder, the main thing is to remember not to eat any of it. You know, like, mm, nom, 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 nom. not really. <laughs> I, I'm not really sure. Uh, they replace lead for lead solder with lead-free, and then use these noxious 
fluxes to try and make it stick to the circuit boards. It's, I can remember the transition was just terrible. The amount of failure rates of the electronic components was horrific. So that's the new LEDs fitted. So let's uh, solder this back on. So the little resistor is soldering to uh, that side. And the wire is soldering to this side. And theoretically at this point I could give it a wee test, but I'm going to be really super confident and just put the whole thing back together. Right. Looks pretty good. So the circuit board sits into the frame like this. I wonder if I've pulled a wee bit of wire out of this. I'm not really sure. Uh, so it sits in like this. Um, oh, this is very, very footery. There we are. Then the little pseudo reflector thing goes over it. This isn't actually sitting in very well, is it? I don't think it's ever destined to sit in very well. Then making sure I don't trap the wires, this little uh, plastic cover then being it capped back in again like this. Then I have to squish the residual wire in and get it so that the flats uh, fit into the little um, matching. This kind of flexes up a bit to allow that. Oh, I think I've actually. No, I haven't. It's all right. There we go. And then the little locking ring comes back down and locks it all in. And that should be my new warm white LED USB light. There we go. Let's see how it goes. Ta da! Warm white USB light. Yeah, that looks quite nice actually. The current is, yep, yeah, still. 0.004 amps, uh, 0.04 amps, 40 milliamps. That's a uh, uh, well. Obviously, the, the voltage of the LEDs is pretty much the same anyway. Three volts. So there you go. That's quite nice, actually. I quite, I quite like that. It's not super bright, um, but uh, it's a much softer light than the original cold white. Yeah, of result.